Scream Queens, Season 2, Episode 10, Thoughts. This episode is called Drain the Swamp. So, spoilers for all episodes of Scream Queens that have come out so far. Another episode I love. Now, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And, yeah. Before I dive into the specific episode, I wanted to rectify... That sounds painful. I don't think I gave full credit to how excellent the bit with Chanel, number one, asking the others to split up in... I forget if it was last week or, you know, one of, one of the episodes of season two. She said that, which is such a slasher cliche, just so many slasher movies have them split up, and you're sitting there and you're like, why are you doing this? This is obviously not going to go well. And Chanel correctly identifies the killer will probably get one of us, but the others will be safe. And and I'll be one of the safe ones, so it's fine. You know, that's... Yeah, really, really love when the show, as it frequently does, references slasher movies and satirizes them. So, to get into this episode... The, the attack with the tennis balls at the start is very funny, and I like the, the you know, the dial that, you know, chooses the, the how, how hard the, the balls are, are hit. I don't know enough about, I'm guessing, tennis to, to, I don't know the people who, you know, the, um, yeah, and it doesn't say named to be trivia either, but obviously they're the names of, like, professional players or something. And, you know, <laughs> poor um, Daria, yet again, gets... Although she does end up surviving because she's there later to make the... So, yeah, she has a very, very, very thick skull, which I suppose we already knew from her, like, explaining why she came back and didn't you know, stay for the, the present that had been left for her that time where the the male Chanel got killed. And Cassidy just can't bring himself to kill Chanel number three, and he says, you know what, I'm not going to be killing anymore at all. And she's like, this is the this is the most wonderful thing. You know, you've never said anything more beautiful in your life. Yeah, that's a paraphrase. I realize not an exact quote. And, you know, relationship goals. See if you can't get your partner to stop killing people. And, yeah, you know, um, Cassidy tells Hoffel, you know, that he's, he's done. And she is not having it. If you're not part of the solution, you're either a gas or a solid. And... Chanel number one takes back Brock because the fact that he tried to strangle her means that their relationship has come such a long way. That's that's truly amazing. Just, yeah, you know, I mean, we already, like, it has made, it has been made beyond clear that she does not feel bad about her own cruelty to other people. So there's a twisted sort of logic to the idea that cruelty towards her might also be forgivable if, if at least it comes from the, the right person. So, yeah, that's just, yeah. And the, yeah, and, and you know, Hester tries to seduce Brock, and as she is wont to do, she will say some things that make a positive impression on the other, and then she'll go too far, and the other will be like, okay, no, never mind, I, we're, we're done here. And, let's see, yeah, and, and Daria was, you know, using, yeah, she's, she's growing tomatoes, and she explains about 
you know, how dangerous fertilizer can be, to which, of course, you know, that's the kind of, you, you can't say that to a serial killer, which in, in Daria's defense, she has no idea Hoffel is. And, yeah, she goes online and just has to click away from one, like, warning thing, and she's good to go. I'd like to think, obviously I'm not going to Google it myself, but I'd like to think that it's at least a little harder to get those kinds of directions, but honestly, there's so much, it's just, there's so much stuff on the internet that should not be available to, to people, so yeah, it's, it's as usual, it's slight exaggeration, but only really that. I really love when the Chanel's think that Chanel number one is going to get engaged. Like, for you know, first it's like you know, okay, so I was going through Brock's phone, and you know, number five is like, I don't think you're allowed. To, you're not supposed to do that. And the others are like, you know, this is why your boyfriends keep getting murdered. You don't know how to have a good relationship. Which is just, like, that is a thing that people, you know, not with murder, but, like, you know, the reason that your relationships don't last is you don't know how to be in a relationship, you know. And, and there is even some truth to that. Like, there are people who, who unknowingly self-sabotage. But it's usually not about serial killer. Just, yeah. But, yeah, you know, the the... And the fact that it's, you know, a cheap engagement ring doesn't seem to, to bother her at all. Just, yeah, you know, and the, the you know, they're called, the, yeah, and they, they do the scream, because of course they do. And, you know, Hoff was like, shut up. Okay, there's some, there's a, an announcement in, you know, by Kathy's, but, you know, and Holt has called everyone in for, you know, and... She, you know, she grabs flowers so she can, be, you know, the, the, yeah, to, to really look like a, you know, a blushing bride-to-be, and the other two are just ecstatic for her, and the music is playing, and then she, you know, she gets there, and Brock, you know, it does look at first like he's about to, you know, propose to, to Chanel, but then he turns around and proposes to Kathy instead, and the music just dies down, and not long after, it's like playing discordantly, and just, yeah, absolutely love that. Yeah, just really, really funny scene, and, you know, she wants him to, she wants to confront him, so she sits and loudly, demonstratively cries in, like, the, the changing room for the, for the doctors, you know, and she, at one point, she's like, ah, I'm sorry, can you, maybe I need, ah, you know, just so funny, and, you know, he comes by, and he's like, okay, I guess I should have told you first, so you don't look like a complete idiot in front of everyone, you know, and and she even describes Munch as her mortal enemy, <laughs> which is a bit extreme considering that the you know they're like they they hate each other, sure, but like mortal enemy. That's like, I mean, that does literally mean, you know, someone that like a, a killer be killed kind of scenario. But it's a show about serial killers, so it is quite appropriate, you know, and he explains, you know, I mean, you're not into sex, you don't seem to really, you know, I, we can, we can be social media dating, and she's like, done, that is 100%, that, because that is all she wants, you know, she legitimately only cares about the appearance of a good relationship, which, you know, yeah, sadly, some young people today, they do care more about the, the appearance of a good relationship than the reality. Really love the tense dinner between Cassidy, his mom, Jane Hollis, and Chanel number three, and 
Also, I don't think I called it out. It, it was in the previous Leon. I, don't, I didn't call it out in the that episode, in my video on that episode, I don't think. But she literally, you know, she comes to, to Jane Hollis and she says, my name's Chanel number three, because that is her identity. You know, she doesn't think of, I, I don't remember it right now, but she did have a name before becoming a Chanel, you know, but she's, you know, because cause obviously that's going to make a negative impression on Jane Hollis. Let's see. <clears throat> But but yeah, you know the it it actually it looks like Jane is like you know what you're we're we're good, but then she like dramatically stands up and says this isn't over until that hospital is shut down, which which is a great because you know later she talks to Zayde and she ends up deciding okay you know what I should at least visit the hospital I should see if they are doing good work, she comes around on it and just. Yeah, very, very nicely done. And, yeah, the wedding itself is very, very funny. And apparently they have a member of SCOTUS, although looking at the the credits here on IMDb, it is an actor playing Justice Kennedy. You know, SCOTUS, I remember some years ago... Not not many years ago, but a few years ago, I think it might have been the asparagus guy. What was his name again? Uh, G Gomer, maybe? Louis? I need a picture. Hold on. Louis Gomer? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he was, he was trying to like mock the LGBTQIA plus community you know by by like saying the 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 letters slightly wrong or something like that and like I mean does he think SCOTUS sounds hilarious because I do I think that sounds substantially sillier than you know SCOTUS and POTUS and FLOTUS these sound substantially sillier those are also abbreviations of, you know, so really, obviously, all he's really saying is he doesn't think, he, he is not taking them seriously, which I think is an excellent argument for him not being a representative. He does not represent people. But it's, I, I didn't even remember this. That is, yeah, I guess he is no longer in office, is he? Good riddance. I'm not saying something should happen to him, but I'm glad he's not in politics. Yeah, and then <laughs> number five comes in and says, you know, it might not be Kuru. I really love when, like, she's still like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm obviously a medical genius because of the MCATs. And the others are like, look, we all cheat on the MCAT. She's like, I didn't cheat. I'm, I, you know, I did inc incredibly well and I didn't cheat. And the others are like, oh, shut up. Stop talking about this. <laughs> because they legitimately don't. And that's such a, it's, it's sad, but it's accurate about a lot of these young conservatives. They don't care if they did it right. They just care about the appearance of it having been done right. So just, yeah, fantastic. And at the very end, we see that there's actually, you know, she actually full on, she's still working at the hospital even when the other Chanel's left. And this idea of you know oh yeah we're you know we'll we'll keep you awake and we'll we'll take a biopsy of the brain, and you know it'll be fine. And he and and you know Munch is like, are you insane? I I might end up brain dead. You know just yeah, very funny. And we do see the the literal draining of the swamp, as as Hoffel does, which I I quite appreciate them working that Trump slogan in, considering that. It was always obvious to anyone who was paying even a little bit of attention that he had no intention of doing so. And let's see. yeah, and and Z Zayde talks to Jane 
And it's like, I mean, I'm sure you taught him some good values, you know. No, it was Modern Family. I'm pretty sure he he learned about the facts of life from watching the facts of life. And yeah, and and Hester tries to talk Brock into killing Munch during the surgery. Just, you know, just say, oops, I slipped, and, well, no, Chanel was going to say she's, yeah, she said she slipped, but Holt was going to say, oh, no, I just thought of this scary movie, I guess I'll, I gotta stop watching scary movies, which, you know, in, in all seriousness, nobody should be watching scary movie, the, that series is absolutely terrible. Like, the first one is passable, I guess, the second one has, like, one funny gag, but... Like, by and large, those are truly terrible movies. Even if I did once have a weakness for the third one. And, yeah, Hester explains, you know, I can't go back to prison. The only way to masturbate is to draw my own porn, and I am a terrible artist. You know, that that is, I mean, that is probably the worst thing about being, you know secluded in this in this glass cell that just yeah and i really love how ungrateful chanel number one is like that's i i tend to not use that word about like i've seen you know recently i saw someone use that about rachel rachel zegler which kind of implies that she's been given that she didn't earn which i think is quite silly. I have I haven't heard any credible source claim that she did a bad performance in any, you know, I, the only thing I've seen her in so far is Shazam 2, but I hear great things about her performance in West Side Story. You know, the only people I hear saying she was bad are racists, which, you know, doesn't make you a racist to say that a non-white actress did a bad performance, but there are people who have made it clear in other statements that they're racist, and yeah, you know, then, of course you're not going to tell the truth about, like, that's just not, anyway, um, you're, you're not trustworthy anymore when it comes to matters of race. You might be on other things, but the, the, you know, unless you've also proven you're not trustworthy in those, but yeah, you know, Chanel number one literally, like, and she explains it, you know, okay, so, you know, she she acts like Munch didn't actually end up doing them a favor, although obviously accidentally so, by bringing in a bunch of pledges who were then killed instead of the Chanel's, or the, the yeah, the top three Chanel's. And then you have the, yeah, and then, you know, they, they were really struggling. Kathy came and brought them out of that and gave them these jobs and, or, you know, yeah, gave, yeah, gave them... A place that they could work, which also meant, you know, yeah, they could they could work their way out of their bad situation. But yeah, she doesn't think, you know, and and she's going to kill her, and she's going to use the the, you know, this scolding hot coffee, and then they yeah, then they have the MCAT conversation, and just. Yeah, I I think there might it might be true that that scolding cuz certainly if it's scolding, yeah, it'll kill germs and I think it's accurate that yeah, yeah, she wouldn't feel it because they've given her anesthetic. That's why they can cut into her head and and stick the biopsy needle in to her brain, you know. And then you have the yeah, and and yeah. Chanel number five ends up suggesting, you know, what you could do is, you know, buy a regular one, let it sit out so it develops germs. That will have an effect. And, yeah, it's too late for that. The surgery is now. So, just, yeah. I really loved the whole smoke on the water bit. And she's, she's right. It is quite good. It is very catchy. And just... It's so, it's so unbelievably offensive, the part where, like, at one, you know, she's like, go smoke, and then, like, the needle goes, like, I think, does is it because of the way he turns it, or how deep it goes, she, like, stops, and he's like, oh, I move it a little, 
uh, look on the water. It's just, that's so wrong, and I'm here for it. I love it. It's so funny. And then the, the latte hits Hoffel, and, and, you know, and, and they're like, you, di you didn't trip. We all saw you weren't, you, you didn't trip. You literally, you pulled off the lid and threw it, you know, you weren't, you weren't tripping. And I really love how bad Chanel number no. five's bedside manner is. You know, she's like, okay, so we didn't discover Kuru. But the good news, wait, that was the bad news? Oh, yeah, I mean, you might still have Kuru. The test was inconclusive, is what that means. The good news is you're still going to die. <laughs> I mean, that's one possible perspective on what good news is, I guess. Um, hypothetically, holy crap. And, you know, she's like, and, and you're prepared for that. That's why it's good news. And, you know, yeah, Munch is like, you have truly terrible bedside manner. And, and yeah, you know, she explains, it sounds like extreme dehydration. And that's because she never drinks water. She only ever drinks vodka. And I, I think it's, I, I'm not like an expert on liquor, but I think it is true. Like there's, yeah, you can't you can't like get the the necessary, you know. Yeah, it's it's that's not going to to hydrate your body, and we see that she even rinses. You know, after brushing her teeth, she rinses with vodka. Just yeah. Let's see, and yeah, and she calls, and you know they talk about oh yeah yeah you know it's it's very sad. And you did eat brains, that is true. Poor Lambie. Um, who's Lambie? Oh yeah, the, the lamb. Yeah, uh, when when our pet lamb dies, we eat lamb brains. Lame brain. And then, you know, and, and yeah, Munch is like, so I didn't eat human brain? No, we don't eat human brains. You xenophobic... Uh, you xenophobic pieces... You xenophobic garbage or something like that, you know. And she doesn't even perceive that she's just been insulted. She's just happy. And, yeah, that is, like... I I wonder if that's, like, them also tut-tutting us in the audience who laughed at the, the joke, which, uh, yeah, it's super offensive, and I feel bad. I'm going to hell. No doubt about that. But that was, yeah, just the, the idea of, of someone getting Kuru. Just, yeah... I mean, they literally, on Scrubs, which I guess, I don't remember which episode, but that might have aired, like, ten years before this one, they literally had, like, one of, they, they had someone misdiagnose something as Kuru, and then, or wait, no, wait, was it the, or wait, did it end up being, no, no, yeah, no, the joke was, I think it was Dr. Cox saying, what do you have now to, to, like, um, um, what are they called again? The people who think there's something wrong and there's actually nothing wrong. And, and not conservative, I mean, like, medically speaking. Ah, crap. I don't remember. Ah, yeah, but, you know, someone who thinks he has... Okay, to be clear, I'm not saying that everything that conservatives say is wrong is actually good and right. They usually, even when they, you know, broken clock theory, even when they do correctly identify a problem, they almost always misidentify the the solution to it. Anyway, the the yeah, you know, so he was making a joke that obviously today someone in the Western world would not have Kuru you know, you'd, you'd have to actually, you'd have to live in that part of the world, and it might not happen today, you know, but, yeah. And, yeah, so, the, the, Hoffel has some, you know, wants to, wants to celebrate. She has some great news, uh, you know, so let's all go to the basement, and, and Munch is like, how did she know? And, like, she, She's so self-obsessed. She doesn't stop and say, there's no way she could know. This is, there's something wrong here. You know, she's just like, ah, good news for me. Good news for everyone. Let's celebrate. Just, you know. 
And yeah, she manages to she she locks up all of them. Lock them up. And you know, gets out the gun and she's like, My name isn't Hoffel, it's Bean. And the Chanel's are like, Ah, poo, does that is that supposed to mean something to us? And she's like, you know, like you know, she says the I forget the name, but she says the name of the maid. And Chanel number three is like, could you give us one more clue? They literally don't even remember, you know. And she says, you know, your maid who you you fried her face off, and and they're just ah uh, oh yeah that one. I guess her name was Bean, wasn't it? Which is especially funny considering they did call her that. They called her Miss Bean all the time you know so just and and Chanel number one is like yeah sorry about that you know and yeah Hoffel is mad at Munch for covering it up which yeah you know we we do we know that she did that to to preserve the name of the college and I love that like um I think yeah I think it was uh, Brock Who's like, you know, I mean, I kind of feel like I'm just a, I, I, I'm feeling I'm being lumped in with the rest of the, and up like, oh, collateral damage, you know. Because, yeah, she has a reason to hate everybody else inside the, the cage. But Brock, you know, I mean, what was she going to say? Everybody except for Brock come and celebrate? You know, that doesn't really make sense. And, yeah, they don't really mind the idea of collateral damage they haven't so far so but yeah I love the the big showdown and the unmasking which you know quite a few slashers culminate in this kind of thing of you know the the true identity of the killers will be well the ones that have a hidden identity I mean not all of them do but they a lot of slashers end with you know okay there's only a few survivors left the killer confronts them all and Zayde and Jane show up because they are, you know, yeah, Jane did agree to, to come and see the hospital. She was very happy with what she saw. And, yeah, she's like, oh, you know, we, sh we should stop killing. I have been reborn, which is just in time, too. Uh, unfortunately, the bullet did kill both versions of her. So, yeah, that's unfortunate and you know she does manage to to get a f you know a few last words out to to Cassidy your father would be proud if he wasn't like deep down in the swamp and almost definitely like skeleton by now and I'm not going to quote the exact line because I don't want to get in trouble but I did quite enjoy Hoffel's line about Cloud Atlas. I'm probably reading too much into it and watching, you know, I, I do watch a lot of Marvel. I can't help but wonder if 616 on the, the clock was like an intentional reference to Marvel. And turns out Denise survived and she came back. After the, the you know, because we saw, you know, the, the machine for the bomb required Hoffel to, to unhook the, the chamber. And, you know, she's like, oh, I can't believe I missed, you know, all the stuff I missed. Hillary, she must be doing great. And the others are like, ah, mm, yeah, about that. Which is, like, literally, who didn't think that Hillary was going to... Clearly, even Trump, you know, there was that leak about how, like, he was, like, shocked, stunned after, and, like, um, I want to say it was Melania was, like, crying and not tears of joy. And Denise explains, you know, they didn't teach us at Quantico, Quantico how to defuse a bomb, but... The TV show Quantico, that showed me how to defuse a bomb. Not wearing my glasses, but I feel like this wire, if I pull that, 
either it's going to stop the timer or it's going to kill us all. Only one way to find out. And because she thinks she's going to die, Chanel number five confesses she does have rational teeth. I don't know, you know, I don't know where they came from, but they're really sharp. And yeah, the the bomb is is diffused, and we have the final confrontation, the killer versus the final girl or girls, and here are also a few guys. And yeah, I I really. It was very funny when, you know, so, so yeah, Hoffel isn't going down without a fight, so she throws the machete at Chanel number three, and Cassidy jumps in and is hit. And, you know, several of the others are like, I mean, you could have just pushed her out of the way, then you'd still be alive. Hemphill suggests, I mean, that's like number three option, that's not, you know... And and number three is like, would you shut up? You know, he's he redeemed himself like this. Now it doesn't matter that he killed all those people and one of the others are like, I don't think it worked that way. Let's see. And that is actually, yeah, I mean, there are American movies and TV shows where a really bad person will do one really good thing right before they die. And the, you know, the narrative kind of treats us as, ah, you know, you see, there was good in them after all. So we shouldn't judge them for all the awful things they did. And, yeah, she she ends up in quicksand. Which is indeed, it is definitely not slow sand. And, you know, Chanel number one is like, you know, in my experience, the justice system is not, is, is far too lenient on, you know, costume serial killers, vigilante justice is the only way. I, and I do quite appreciate, because that is, like, there are slashers where the, the final girl specifically chooses not to kill the slasher killer, and we as the audience are like, okay, I get that you're like, oh, you're merciful, who, you know... Who among us to have, you know, to do, what, what is that thing, you know, don't, don't throw glass houses if you live in a rock, but, my God, it's a serial killer. You should not be just, yeah, um, just, so, so, yeah, I, I quite appreciate when a slasher movie, or in this case, show, ends with the, the, you know, the final girl letting them, them die, and, you know, it is also a little funny, like, Hoffel is like, I mean, I feel like this is a very bad way to die. It's like, you're a serial killer. You've killed people in pretty bad ways yourself. And <laughs> Munch is like, ah, curse my conscience. You know, she, she reaches out, uh, you know, and it doesn't work because the, the thing was old and, and broken. Which is, of course, yeah, you know, there was nothing... If everything in that area was like old and busted rather than new hotness and yeah we do yet another uh, you know skip ahead in in time which you know the the let's see season one ended like that season two opened like that so it's very natural for them to and yeah you know shell number five is really doing incredible work at the hospital and Zayde is working to, you know, keep prices low. Just, yeah, really, really great to, to see. And <laughs> Munch says, you know, she wants to find out if Brock really is a vampire, like everyone believes. And then we learn, you know, Hester, you know, there was that thing about, you know, Number three said, oh, yeah, I, I saw her get in, a, in an Uber earlier. I don't know why it took her so long to get away, and now we know. It's because she she didn't just, like, leave. She went to the bank in costume, and, like, it's not a great picture. That's, that's truly amazing, and I appreciate 
that someone bothered to upload that. If you go to the IMDb page for that, you have, you know, Leah Michelle there with the with the gray wig and the glasses and the suit. It just yeah, just amazing. Like she obviously doesn't look very much like Kathy, but just yeah. And yeah, the it's just as Hester suggested she and Brock are going to be hunting, you know, people who crashed onto to Blood Island, and they're gonna give them they're they're gonna give them some time to to recover. You know, it's it's no fun hunting people who are completely, you know, exhausted. And I love that the butler clearly hears this, and he's like, "Very good, sir." He's not like, "Uh, yeah, I gotta make a phone call." Hello, police. No, he's just like, okay, I will bring out the food now, so so you can eat before you hunt. That's that's very good. And yeah, Chanel number one talks about you know, I know that they say that the people who survive these stories are like these virginal, virtuous, you know, people, but I say you have to be ruthless, skinny, pretty, you know. I don't make the rules, it's just, that's what I am, and I survived, so there we go, you know. Destiny called me, well, Destiny DM'd me, because it's 2016, nobody actually calls anyone anymore. And yeah, she did indeed become a TV doctor, just as she had been dreaming of for a year. And, you know, number three is the executive producer, whatever that means. And which which is very funny because that line, you know, there's there's three credited writers: Ryan Murphy, Brad Falchuk, and Ian Brennan. And if you go to the IMDb for, let's see, for the the show itself, all three of them are executive producers on this show so like <laughs> so so essentially the joke is even executive producers even even they themselves executive producers themselves do not know what executive producers do you know and yeah i mean a lot of the time you know i can i can believe that Chanel number 5 wouldn't want to keep being around Chanel number one if she doesn't have to. And she did seem legitimately happy to, you know, she's always, I suppose not always, but certainly in this season, a lot of times, you know, if, if something seems to be good news for someone, she's legitimately, like, happy for them. You know, a lot of the time it's not good news for them. But, yeah, I could believe that she would want to be a, a doctor. Chanel number three got along quite well with Chanel number one. Most of the time, there was a little bit of friction sometimes. So, I could believe that she would happily work alongside her. And she gets the show Love in the Sea, which, like, okay, at, that, at this point, it's like, I mean, when it was Love in the D, it's, you know, yeah. It's a play on her name being Lovin, and, you know, Lovin the D is, like, a euphemism. Actually, I suppose it's not actually technically a euphemism, but it means something dirty. But Lovin the C, that's nothing. That's not anything at all. And Lovin is no longer working on the show. She was poisoned, which nobody was surprised by because she was complete hell to work for so it's like I guess they're just com they're just so happy with that name you know it's like a comfortable sweater it's like a, a couch that you've been sitting in for so long that it has an ass groove why change now you know just like there's so many her name is Chanel like use that somehow not just her the first letter of her first name but yeah and then she says something that I'm sure many conservatives have wet dreams about. Should we have death panels for rich people so that they can get the, the, their inheritance sooner? You know, because when Obama was trying to get the ACA through, 
you know, the conservatives were screaming about death panels, which, you know, technically there already were death panels. It was just the, you know, the ACA wouldn't create death panels. They might have, uh, you know, if it had gone through without being so watered down, it might have gotten rid of some of them. You know, there already was, like, people going, well, it'll cost us a lot of money to, to save that person's life, so no, we let them die. And, yeah, you know, death panels, I, I find it difficult to believe that conservatives who supported the death panels were actually that upset about the death panels. They knew that they would be unpopular, so they tried to make it seem like they were the ones who were against them. And, yeah... I, I love just how utterly shameless Chanel number one is here that just she's she's actually proud of her shame, so it's it's two sins at once. And I'm just kidding, there's no god. And yeah, we end with the red devil lead, leaving like I it looks like a like a box for an engagement ring and you know KKT -T, so Kappa Kappa Tau or Crappy Crappy Cow and the the yeah the red devil is on the back seat and what i love about this is if they ever do make a third season which i really am hoping for they could so easily retcon this they could so easily say oh no no it wasn't you know she wasn't killed because this is actually less than the the one that season 1 ended with you know season 1 it looked like the Red Devil was going to kill Chanel in the the mental institution, and then I think it's like episode two of season two we learn oh it was Chad screwing around you know which fits his personality you know yeah he he does like like he talks about jerking off in in funerals uh, not funerals uh, cemeteries you know so yeah I'm sure he would like to to pretend to to stab someone. You know, and here, yeah, like, I mean, it's not Chad, that's, you know, he's dead now, but there's a lot of guys who have feelings for Chanel, so, yeah, it's it might just be one of them, and they're making a very misjudged romantic gesture, you know, I mean, so, so yeah, I, I really appreciate that. And... Yeah, um, I think that is everything I have to say for this show that requires spoilers. I will be recording the spoiler-free review, uh, yeah, uh, very, very shortly. Right, uh, let's see, so IMDb trivia, is there anything, wow, somebody really loves the fact that Abigail Breslin and Leah Michelle previously started together in the movie New Year's Eve because they put it on a bunch of these IMDb trivia for specific episodes. And it's like, and and the fact that Emma Roberts and Taylor Lautner previously started in the movie Valentine's Day together. That's also, yeah. And, oh, wow, I did not realize, yeah, so, um... Ingrid Hoffel, played by Kirstie Alley, who was a vocal supporter of Trump, meets her demise when she drowns in the swamp. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. I... Yeah. Um, let's see. And I think... Right. A couple of things. I am very happy that uh, Denise Hemphill made another appearance. You know, such a fun character. And, yeah, you know, it was a, a very epic, like, the, the yeah, you know, uh, conclusion was, was very, yeah, it was, it was sufficiently big, and the, the big dramatic moments really worked. I appreciate that. Jane, you know, she just barely has time to forgive, to to call off the, the killing before she's killed, and the remaining killer still wants to kill him. And, you know, obviously it's absurd to say that Cassidy actually did redeem himself, 
that, um, that it's okay that he killed all those people, but the fact that he made an effort to redeem himself, uh, you know, I think works for the, the character and such. I really love that, like, if there were a third season, Hester Ulrich is still around. Right, I think it's, I, I like that um, Kathy ends up becoming a sexpert, uh, you know, helping women who are middle-aged still, you know, have orgasms and such, you know, which, I, I mean, that, yeah, they, they say that, uh, you know, a lot of women reach their sexual peak at 40, whereas a lot of men reach theirs after 30 seconds. But, yeah, um, and, yeah, the, the idea of, of two serial killers ending up together and serial killing together, just, yeah, that is, that is very funny. Um, right, I like that early in the episode, Cassidy is like, you know, I'm gonna kill my mom, you know, to, to solve this whole thing, you know, honestly, yeah, I can imagine, there, it's exaggerated, but there might well be men out in the world who would, like, rather kill their mom than have a conversation with her, to, yeah. I think that might be everything... Yeah, I th I think they did a good job uh, resolving, you know, all of the, uh, yeah, all of the actual green meanies are, uh, you know, dead by the end of this episode. Cassidy, Hoffel, and the, you know, then there were other ones who died before this one. Hester wasn't a green meanie; she helped them some. And let's see. Yeah, and it you know it one ups the the first season finale with the fact that like in that one you know Hester got away with it in this one it's like no Hester's gonna keep doing this and yeah the fact that Brock is a killer yeah like there were there were so many clear clues that if he had turned out not to be it would have seemed completely ridiculous. You know, there's there's other characters that that's true of, but yeah, um, that is it for this one. So yeah, I am really gonna miss this show. Um, fingers crossed for season three, and if we do get one, I'll you know maybe do another spoiler-free review after that one has aired. And yeah, starting next week, I will be doing the show called Blood Curse, and it is also known as, uh, I should have looked this up before, I, okay, I'll have it momentarily, um, let's see, so, I'm not sure exactly which day, I guess, if I had to guess, it might be like Monday of next week that I'll do the very first episode of Blood Curse slash Teludara. And yeah, until then, if you are dying, it is only fair to announce to the world that if you do in fact have teeth in your vagina. <laughs>